and welcome to Take Time. I'm your host, Patrick Marlette, and today we're going to continue our conversation on the Zello's Hammerhead. Now, first and foremost, I'd like to apologize for any ambient sounds you might be hearing, the rain effects, maybe the occasional siren, if I allow that in the video. Um, it is storming here in New York right now, so you can expect to hear the sounds of rain in the background. Let's just pretend this is an asthma video, and that's actually a soothing sound to complement the video. Now, the watching question today is the Zellos hammerhead I have in my hand right here, this big hunk of titanium. It is a thousand meter diver, and due to that, it is a little bit larger in scale than you'd expect your diver to be. Now, most of us are accustomed to our smaller in scale, 150 meter to 300 meter divers, while Zelos is a big fan of the deep water divers. So most of their cases from the hammerhead to the abyss are a little bit larger, again, than your average dive watch, which was one of our larger complaints, pun intended, in our part one video. And the second biggest complaint happened to be the cost. Now this watch features an NH35 movement that's similar to what you might find in a Seiko Turtle. It's a hacking hand winding movement with a lower beat rate and it's pretty common amongst your automatic divers. It's a great movement and I don't mind seeing it. The thing is we are used to seeing watches with an NH35 being a little bit more affordable, maybe somewhere in the $400 to $600 range. At full retail, this guy is about $850. So the real question today is, is, is it worth the cost of admission? And I'm hoping to answer that for you all. However, with all of my reviews here on the channel, I like to start with the bad and then move on to the good before giving my final verdict on a review item. So let's start with some of the bad. Now, the first bad note I want to mention is actually right on the face of the watch, and that is with the bezel. You'll notice the bezel itself is lined up quite neatly with the 12 o'clock marker. And I'm you know, making that distinction by looking at these little notches. There is a gap dead center that is precisely where the 12 o'clock marker is. However, you'll notice that the insert itself is slightly misaligned. The insert is, as you can tell with the triangle there, uh, just a little to the left of its 12 o'clock mark. It just barely missed the mark. It's not the end of the world, but it is a little bit of a nuisance. And, you know, I've tried this a few different ways to see if I, it's a 120 click bezel. Tried this a few different ways to see if I couldn't get it to line up with that marker, but no matter what I did, it was always just slightly misaligned. So you can expect differences in tolerances with these watches. I've actually noticed them selling defective units on their site. Uh, I'm assuming that with their machining process, perhaps they do get a few defective units. Um, a bezel insert like this, it would be easy enough to pop off the bezel and just realign the insert. Not a major bad note, but definitely worth noting that out of the box, mine had the insert slightly misaligned. And I'm just triple quadruple checking right now because this is something that has been bothering me since I got it. I wanna make sure I'm not crazy. Yeah, it's, it's definitely slightly misaligned. Um, the next bad note I wanna mention, however, is actually to do with the bracelet. And one of the reasons this was off the bracelet earlier is that it is really hard to get these end links back onto the case. And I actually have a few qualms with the end links themselves. Now the spring bar inside of this solid titanium end link has to do a lot of acrobatics to fit itself into the holes drilled into the lugs. And I was able to get this one back on. I've been wearing this on a yellow nylon strap, which I'll show you guys a little bit later. I think it's an awesome combination, but the bracelet itself wears well, unfortunately, Fitting it back onto the watch is a pain in the butt. I've had to use a spring bar tool to push the spring bars into the holes they should be aligned in. It's just not an easy fit, and that's partly due to how these end links were machined. And another note on how they were machined, I'm not a fan of the overall aesthetic with the case. You're seeing a gap there at the top near the bezel. Same thing back here. I feel like these end links could have been machined to better match the case lines. They don't here, and it's a little annoying because overall the look is nice, but and it looks complete when you look at the front profile of this case, but when you're looking at it at an angle, you can tell that the end links aren't machined perfectly to match the case sides, and I would prefer that they were. Another nuisance about this design and the way it's cut is that the edges of these end links pop over the top of the lugs. Uh, you can't feel what I'm feeling when I do this, but those end links are just peeking over the tops 
of those lugs, the way they are machined, I think that could have been handled just a little bit better. Otherwise, you know, the end links, they're solid. People love solid end links. They fit against the case perfectly when you can get them there. Um, it's not, again, a major complaint, but something you will have to deal with when you're fitting this on different straps and fitting it back on the bracelet. And while we're talking about the bracelet, I wanna mention the clasp here. It reminds me of a clasp I had on a Borealis watch I purchased ages ago. That's another micro brand that makes uh, deep water divers. And their ratcheting clasp had micro adjustments. This one does not. You're relying on the ratcheting system to fit this to your wrist precisely. And I have to say, I'm not a fan of this. I'd prefer that we had at least three micro adjustment levels or maybe half links to accompany our whole links to get this to fit our wrist better aside from relying on this ratcheting system. What is nice though, as opposed to some ratcheting systems I've found is that it doesn't automatically close in on itself. You have to use this deployant system to deploy it and bring it back to its at rest position inside the clasp. Now for me personally, I've had to ratchet this out twice to get the precise fit I wanted for my wrist. Again, this isn't my favorite method. You can see how flimsy this extension looks and that's just what it is. It's a diver extension. It should predominantly be used to fit this watch over a wetsuit, not necessarily size it to your wrist. So I think a better clasp could be used on future models. Otherwise, if you don't mind ratcheting it to the right fit, this shouldn't be a problem for you. Now, regarding the scale of this watch, again, this is something that a lot of viewers complained about. It is a rather large watch. Well, it's certainly not intended to be a small watch. I can say that when you buy this watch, you're sort of buying into the big watch club. So if you don't wanna be a member of that club, this might not be the watch for you. However, I will state that they do have smaller lines of dive watches in their collection, just none that look like the Hammerhead. And I'll agree with some of you, I think it would be awesome if they dropped this to maybe being a 500 meter diver with that same movement and scaled down the watch by a lot. You know what, even just making it thinner because the 17 roughly millimeter thick case here is, is a bit on the wrist. Again, this isn't something you should be wearing into the office or be concerned about having under a cuff but it is on the thicker side. So if you don't like thick watches, this is probably not the watch for you. Okay, with all of those bad notes out of the way, there are actually a ton of good notes in regards to the hammerhead I'd like to touch on. Uh, namely, I love the lightness of the material used here. This titanium is fantastic. It's light on the wrist despite the scale, very deceiving. It's a very easy watch to wear around. You don't feel encumbered by it. It doesn't feel like it's weighing you down. If you wanted something shackled to your wrist like that, there are definitely steel watches from their collection that will treat you that way, but this is not gonna feel like a shackle on the wrist. And secondly, it's even better when you take it off the bracelet and strap it to a nylon. That has been my preferred method. When we started this video, I pried it off my nylon because I thought you guys probably wanna see it on the bracelet first. Oh, by the way, I'm sorry, one more bad note. I'm told Zealous's customer service is fantastic. I've emailed them in response to, if you watch our part one video, the lack of buckles on my additional straps. They haven't responded to me. Regardless, you should always receive buckles with alternative straps, you shouldn't have to supply yourself with buckles. There should have been buckles in that pack. If you don't receive them, and I've been told some people didn't receive buckles with their you know, alternative strap options, contact them. They should send you buckles. You should get two buckles with those two straps. But otherwise, it is a pure joy on different strap options. And as you guys might have noticed at the beginning of this video, this was not on this bracelet, it was on nothing. That's because I've been wearing it on a nylon strap that I'm gonna to love to show you guys in a second. But why don't we touch on some of the good notes I was speaking of. Again, you have an awesome assortment of materials used in composing this watch from the titanium of the case to the ceramic bezel insert to the double dome sapphire crystal all the way down to the awesome movement used inside this watch. I do think this movement is fantastic. It's proved a steady workhorse for me, and it has proved an equally viable option in my Seiko divers as well. So I have no issues with the movement here, as well as the BGW9 Superluminova that is adorning the dial, minute track, just everywhere. 
As you guys are seeing now, there should be a loom shot up on the screen. This thing lights up at night and it's just a joy to look at. Now, before we move on with the review, I'd love to provide you guys with a wrist shot so you can see what the hammerhead might look like when you're wearing it. Now, this is what the Zellos hammerhead is gonna look like for all of your admirers when you're out and about this summer. And when you're going to admire it, it's gonna look a little something like this. Now, as you guys can tell, this watch is as handsome as a hawk on that titanium bracelet. I do love the overall design of the bracelet aside from those end links when paired with this case. However, I've been enjoying the heck out of this watch on a different strap. Now, if you guys follow the Instagram, you've probably already seen this watch on the strap, but this is a canary yellow strap from Blue Shark. And personally, I think this is just an awesome combination with this watch. I think it complements the second hand and that little bit of literature at the bottom there really well. I've been wearing this mostly on this strap because it's just a sheer joy. Despite the added thickness, which isn't such a big deal for me because it's already thick enough, why not make it a little bit thicker? I like this on nylon straps. I think this watch pairs extremely well with them. So if you're feeling like exploring some different avenues with straps and you don't have the buckles for your leather or canvas strap option, feel free to throw it on a nylon. I think it looks good. Now let's answer that large question I posed at the beginning of the video. And that is whether or not this watch is worth the cost of admission. And of course, this is gonna vary for each one of us. You know, as a consumer, we have different price ranges that we find agreeable for what we're consuming. You know, when it comes to watches, some of us budgetize a little differently. However, I noticed a lot of you guys thought that this was just a little too much at $850. Now, the thing is, Zellos operates on a system that a lot of other micro brands do with the pre-order, early bird, super special deals and savers that you might find if you were to purchase the watch ahead of its actual production date. Now, Zellos holds multiple sales throughout the year, but part of their business model is when a new production unit comes out, they have pre-order sales. Again, a lot of brands do this. I consider that the value of the watch. Now, I forget what this was pre-ordering at or early birding at or special offering at initially, but it was a couple hundred dollars less than its actual value here. Now, guys, a lot of these have already sold out, so people clearly like the models and they clearly jumped on the hype train with everyone else. But for those who are hesitant, I think holding off for the next batch of hammerheads when they're in that pre-order range is obviously the best route to go. Guys, if you wanna save money and you like this design, just join the mailing list for this company and you'll likely hear when a new model comes out. That's what I've done with multiple other brands in the past and new brands as I find them. I buy a lot of the content for this show, so getting them ahead of time at that depreciated rate is much better, obviously. But for $850, is it still worth the cost of admission? Um, yes, yes and no. If you like this design, if you've owned one in the past, well, odds are likely that you'll like this one too. I think that's best assessed by you. Uh, me personally, again, I would have tried to shoot for that pre-order sale at 850. I still think it's reasonable, though there are very compelling offerings from other brands that are much less just baseline. So it's a tough sell. I think it's a great watch. But at 850, again, it's a harder pill to swallow. However, I will agree with you guys that with the movement choice here, that being the NH35, I think the price can come down a bit. That is a very consumer friendly movement. I think if they were using a Salida or Etta, it might warrant the $850 price tag. I think it's 700 with that price adjustment, this would still be a great deal, brand new. Ultimately, I think Zelos is one of those brands that is going places. I would definitely recommend joining their mailing list, if they have a mailing list, to get on board one of those earlier pre-orders. I think that is the way to go with this group if you're interested in buying from them. They also use a range of movements, so just be sure to check the product to see what you're getting. Although I will argue that the NH35 deserves to be 
a more valuable movement and that's just me because I'm a sucker for Seiko. But again, it's performed very admirably here and I have had no complaints. All right, gang, that is it for the review. If you found this enlightening or in the least entertaining, feel free to hit that like button. It looks a little something like this guy. If you have friends, forums, or groups that are interested in picking up the Zellos Hammerhead, perhaps send this video their way first to get another consumer's opinion and some buying advice for this brand moving forward. Again, they have a whole assortment of models ranging in different scales with different movements. There is something there for everyone. I think you want to catch that initial wave of sales to get the best deal that you can afford. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. I do videos like this twice a week. So if watch content is your thing, well, be on the lookout for more content from Take Time. If you want to be a member of this community, you can hit the subscribe button. And if you want to see videos precisely when they air, you can hit the bell icon next to that. Again, my name is Patrick Marlette and thank you for the time.